The Modoc tribe was originally native to the Pacific Coast. The ancestral home of the Modoc tribe of Oklahoma consisted of 5,000 square miles along the California-Oregon border, as seen here. The Modoc date back 10,000 years to prehistoric times. They at one time lived in caves. Originally, this was protection from a volcanic eruption. They were culturally a unique people. They stayed to themselves, drove out unwelcome people, and on occasion they would raid neighboring tribes. They were hunters, fishermen, and they followed the seasons. In the 1820s, Peter Skeen Ogden, a trader with the Hudson Bay Company, became the first European trader to venture into the Klamath Basin, which was the homeland of the Modocs. The region's lack of pelts, short growing season, and the inhospitable lands to the east made the basin unattractive to the first wave of outsiders. A British American from Kentucky established an alternative route to the Oregon Trail. His name was Lindsay Applegate. This trail went right through the Modoc land. The Modoc started to establish trading businesses of their own. They sold lumber and set up freighting routes for the white man. As a result of opening the opening of the new Oregon Trail, smallpox and tuberculosis began taking a toll on the Oregon and California natives. Within one year of Applegate's trail opening, the presence of many settlers passing through their land alarmed the Modoc. Old Chicagoan, chief of the Modoc, and some warriors raided an immigrant party. Two women were taken captive. In 1852, Indian hunter Ben Wright wanted to keep the Oregon Trail safe for settlers, and he also wanted to retrieve the two captive women. Wright also set out to murder as many Modoc as possible. During a supposed meeting for peace, which the Modoc were eager to achieve, Wright laced the banquet food with cyanide. The natives felt suspicious and did not eat the food. Wright's men began firing pistols. The Modoc retreated into the bush where they were searched out and shot. Up to 80 Modoc were killed that day. Under the Reservation Accord of 1864, the Modoc relocate to the Klamath Valley and attempt to build homes on reservation lands. Mistreatment by the Klamath tribe, who also had been relocated to this reservation, the Modoc, led by Chief Captain Jack, left the reservation in 1865. They returned to their homeland near Tule Lake. Part of this land also contained lava beds. By this time, several dozen settlers had taken up residence in the ancestral home of the Modoc tribe. The natives harassed these settlers for over a year, attempting to force them off the land. This war involved a thousand U.S. soldiers against 55 Modoc warriors. The war was dominating the front pages of every newspaper all over America for over a year. Mississippi to the Pacific Ocean. 
In southern Oregon, the remains of the Modoc Indian tribe were trying to live out their lives on the Klamath Reservation. The only problems were a hostile neighbor Indian tribe and an Indian agency which lied. Unable to tolerate the conditions and false promises, the Modoc under Captain Jack left the reservation and headed for their traditional lands, lands now promised to settlers. The troop of cavalry sent after them failed to secure a negotiated settlement. Erupting in gunfire as Captain Jack fled, the soldiers laid a torch to the encampment behind them. A flurry of telegrams rushed back and forth, and the U.S. Army received the word the Modoc War had begun. Immediately, three companies of the 21st Infantry Regiment, howitzers from the 4th, the 1st Cavalry, along with a contingent of two Oregon volunteer companies, began their march at once from their barracks at Port Vancouver under the command of Colonel Wheaton. It was a force of some 300 infantry, cavalry, and artillery, all on the march after Captain Jack. Dug in at lava beds along the Oregon-California border, the Modocs were situated to weather out cannons, rifle fire, cavalry, and a siege as Washington amasses over 1,000 troops to combat the Modocs, who at their height never had more than 186 under arms. The most powerful men on the continent want a war for land. A people want the lands that belong to them. An army doesn't want a war at all. Which side are you on? Jack requested a meeting with Alfred Meckham. Alfred Meckham was a superintendent for Indian Affairs. The meeting took several hours. Captain Jack had requested that the lava beds be given to them as a reservation for the Modoc people. Alfred Meckham attempted to get the U.S. government to allow the Modocs to stay on their ancestral lands. With the settler complaints mounting, Alfred Meckham was replaced by Thomas O'Donnell, who was ordered to round up Captain Jack and his band. I quote, peaceably if possible, or by force if you must. And they were to return them to their Klamath reservation. On April 11th, 1873, there was a peace meeting between General Granby of the U.S. Army and Captain Jack. The commissioners, two interpreters, the chief, which was Captain Jack, Scarface Charlie, Boston Charlie, Charlie Head Doctor, also attended. Giving a signal, the chief drew a revolver and shot General Canby in the face. The Indian off the Indian Affair officer was shot along with the Peace Commissioner. The remaining men fled, evading the rifle shots of the Modoc. The U.S. Army tracked Captain Jack and his band to a place near Clear Lake where they surrendered. Captain Jack was the only Indian leader executed for participation in one of our country's many Indian wars. Captain da Jack Scrooge Conchin, John, Black Jim, Boston Charlie were all hanged on the gallows. At the last minute, however, two Modoc natives avoided the gallows. Brancho and Soyez were sent to Arcatraz Island instead. On October 12, 1873, the first Modoc were loaded on 27 wagons and they departed to Fort Claymouth, Oregon and from there, they went to Redding, California. From Redding, California, they were loaded onto a train. They went to Fort Russell in Wyoming Territory. Then they went to Fort McPherson in Nebraska. On November 16, 1873, they arrived at Baxter Springs, Kansas. On June of 1874, 4,000 acres were purchased for them from the Eastern Shawnee tribe. The first years following removal to Indian Territory were difficult ones for the Modoc. The 
first winter, there were no government funds for food, clothing, or medical supplies. During the 1870s, it was common knowledge that the Indian agents assigned to look after the well-being of the Modoc defrauded the government and the Indians of resources for food, medical supplies, and clothing. By 1879, after being at the Quapaw Agency for six years, the Modoc population had been reduced to 99 people. By 1891, there were 67 Modoc left. As a result of misuse of funding, the Indian agencies were placed in the hands of religious groups such as the Society of Friends or the Quakers. This group successfully proposed an Indian peace policy to President Ulysses S. Grant. The Modoc were very interested in the education of their children. In 1879, the government constructed a school on the Modoc reservation. Several children attended the Carlisle Indian School near Arkansas City, Kansas. In 1967, the Modoc created an informal tribal government and were again federally recognized in 1978. Their constitution was adopted in 1991. Chief Fallis is currently the chief of the Modoc tribe. He was responsible for obtaining federal recognition for the tribe and reestablishing a tribal land base. Chief Fallis has also initiated numerous economic programs such as the Red Cedar Recycling, they've opened the Stables which is an off-track betting and high-stakes bingo establishment. They also are operating a bison herd. Today the Tribal Office Administration operates numerous federal and state programs that benefit tribal members as well as other Native Americans in the area. backpedal a little bit here. Um, when I did this research I had a colleague tell me that the California and the Oklahoma Modocs were not the same tribe. As I did the research though I found out this was not the case. After the Modoc War the tribe had split off into two groups. One group was shipped off into to Oklahoma. The other group stayed at the Klamath Reservation in Oregon. The the Klamath Re Reservation consists of three groups of tribes. One is the Klamath tribe, the Nahuskin tribe, and also the Modoc tribe. Uh, in 1909, the Oklahoma Modoc did have an opportunity from the government if they wanted to. They were allowed to go back to Oregon and go back to the Klamath uh, Reservation. The records indicate that 29 of the Modoc did go back to Oregon. Today, both these tribes, they do have a common ancestry and heritage, but they're two different entities now. Uh, one is governed from the uh, Klamath Reservation. They have their own govern governing uh, group. And then, of course, we have the Modoc tribe here in Oklahoma, and they also are their own governing uh, entity. This is a map of the Klamath Reservation. It is located on the Oregon and California state border. These are some photos of the Klamath Reservation. Currently there are about 600 members of the tribe at the Klamath Reservation and part of those are Modoc. Um, the Mohawk tribe of Oklahoma currently has about 200 on its roll.